It's mid-July. Alkaline soil reflects the blinding sun while tumbleweeds choke every shrub and fence line in sight. The one time of year it isn't even remotely breezy is of course the one time you wish it were. This isn't the Middle East. This isn't Northern Africa. I've been wandering around for days in a desolate barren wasteland with temperatures exceeding 100 degrees, with high winds, sand everywhere. That's a joke, the truck's parked right behind me. But if you're out and about doing things in Idaho, make sure you stay safe. We're gonna teach you how to beat the heat. The infernal heat coupled with the lack of breeze and bone dry air is deterrent enough to keep most people reclused in their homes with the blinds closed and curtains drawn, venturing out only for groceries and cold beverages. As the summer temperatures inch toward the triple digits, the landscape around Mountain Home Air Force Base takes on an unwelcoming appearance. Grasses die off, leaving the plains a dry brown color. Paiute ground squirrels, or whistle pigs as they're commonly known, so abundant in spring, disappear into their burrows for estivation. Almost no signs of wildlife persist through the dry, hot months in the high desert grasslands. The upshot is that there are plenty of ways to beat the heat. Now when most people get an assignment to Mountain Home, they don't expect this for the scenery. Maybe you expect a giant nature park. And while we can't pack up the base and move it to some place with a more visual appeal, we can take a short drive to where their landscape does meet those expectations. On our way, let's talk about a few things to keep in mind. For starters, we're going for a bit of a drive, and especially when going up steep grades, you need to make sure your vehicle is ready for the temperatures. Always give your vehicle an inspection before you hit the road, Check your tire pressure and lights, and especially your fluids. Oil, coolant, windshield, brakes, and power steering, if any of these critical components go out, could find yourself in a lot of trouble. The high temperatures put extra strain on your engine, especially with the AC on or going uphill. A full coolant tank could mean the difference between a relaxing summer getaway and a multi-thousand dollar repair. So we're headed off to the mountains to go camping, and in addition to our camping gear, we need to have an emergency car kit just in case. Things like a space blanket, extra radiator fluid, jumper cables, uh, even water, and it doesn't hurt to have a backup gas can as well. Here's one thing to keep in mind as you dig out and dust off all your camping gear. Idaho is home to two dangerous species of spider, the hobo spider and black widows, like this one. Both come into contact with people in dark, cluttered areas like cellars, basements, garages, wood piles, and sheds. Look out for webs, watch where you put your hands, and shake out clothing, sleeping bags, and boots before using them. Both species pack a nasty punch, and while rarely fatal, bites can cause necrosis, which could lead to the loss of a digit or even a limb. So if you are a gun enthusiast and plan on doing some hunting in Idaho, it's always good to know how to handle your weapon. I mean, think safety first. So we've got Justin, he's gonna to talk to us a little bit about rifle safety and just the general rules of thumb being safe with your weapons. Now it's important to be safe with all of your firearms. Uh, excuse me, hold that. Now, make sure that's always pointed in a safe direction. Okay. That's the first rule of firearm safety. Okay. So my foot's not a good idea. Right. Okay. Foot, uh, camera people. Uh, if, never point the gun at something you're not willing to destroy. Okay. Along with that, all of the firearm safety rules stem from the idea that you should treat every firearm as if they're loaded. Okay. Even if you know they're not, assume they are and act as if they are. So, next thing is uh, always be able to identify your target. Know what you're shooting at and know what's behind it. It's gonna get loud. Put the gun and you grab get it. this right in there. Yep. And then you keep your booger hook off the bang switch. It's really important. Your booger hook off the bang switch. That's right. Did you get the booger hook off the bang switch? All right, this hand you bring to the front of the, of the pistol. Okay. And then you pull it back. Okay. Now. Good. Yay! Good start. So southern Idaho fits into the most northern bit of the Great Basin Desert, which is America's largest desert. So naturally in the desert, you're probably gonna think snakes, right? Well, luckily, there's only one venomous species of snake in this area, and that is this little beauty right here. This is a Great Basin rattlesnake, 
and obviously any snake you encounter, all you have to look at is that rattle. But one problem that uh, American snakes are encountering is you get a lot of people who come out, they see a snake, they want to kill it. And rattlesnakes are really prone to this because when they uh, are agitated, normally they're going to rattle. However, by rattling, that gives away their position, so it gives people more of an opportunity to come and kill the snake. So what's happening is a case of microevolution in that the ones that rattle get killed and therefore don't live to reproduce. So as you can see, this one's not rattling at all, which is a problem a lot of people have when they're hiking in the desert like this. They'll come across a snake and they won't even know it's there because it won't rattle until they step on it and it bites them. It's one thing you really always want to keep your eye on is when you're out hiking, watch where your feet are going, watch where you put your hands. So it's best to, if you encounter a snake in the wild, just stop, take a look at it, appreciate that you get to have this opportunity to see it and let it go on its way like she's trying to do. Continuing northeast out of Mountain Home, the landscape changes dramatically in a matter of 10 miles. Entering the foothills of the Sawtooth Mountains, the dry brown desert grasslands are left behind and replaced by green rolling hills, followed by meadows and wetlands interspersed with groves of aspen and evergreens. Once you get outside of the Mountain Home area, find some great cliffs, great hills to go Sunday driving or even rock climbing. Just be careful, a lot of these old hills don't have guardrails and the cliffs do sneak up on you. There have been a couple fatalities from airmen in the past. Just be safe when you're out driving. That's a long way down. The next stop on our tour of the mountains is Anderson Ranch Reservoir. This is a popular spot for salmon and trout fishing, boating and camping, and it also gives a little taste of the picturesque mountain west that most people imagine when they think of Idaho. Anderson Ranch Reservoir is home to smallmouth bass, rainbow and bull trout, and kokanee salmon, but fishing here is best done from a boat or with loads of patience. In May, the prairie between Pine and Fairfield erupts into a sea of lavender hues as the camas lilies enter their bloom and deer and pronghorn antelope become frequent additions to the wetlands and the Sawtooth Mountain foothills. This part of Idaho is world-renowned for pristine snow and winter sports, but summertime won't leave you high and dry out here. Whitewater rafting and horseback riding are just a couple of the abundant activities available in the Sawtooth Wilderness. In fact, Mountain Home's outdoor adventure program is second to none in getting airmen off the base and into the wild. Alturas, Yellowbelly, and Redfish are a few of the mountain lakes in the Stanley Basin north of Ketchum and Sun Valley. A short hike into the Sawtooths from any of the trailheads in the area will bring you to even more alpine lakes with stunning views and crystal clear waters. If you're a fisherman, you may even be able to land the elusive golden trout or arctic grayling. These mountain habitats are home to the majority of Idaho's big game, including wolves, mountain lions, and grizzly and black bears. While attacks are rare, always take precautions, make noise while hiking to avoid startling a bear, and don't leave food items unsecured near a campsite. The more popular campgrounds in the Sawtooth Wilderness operate on a reservation basis, so spur-of-the-moment visits can be a little hit and miss. However, a little research can often turn up plenty of unreserved sites or even lesser used first come, first serve campgrounds. Southern Idaho is prone to extreme weather. You can be caught in sudden thunderstorms, dust storms, or even tornadoes. And on the mountaintops, freak blizzards can strike even in the height of summer. On the other extreme, stifling heat and dry air turn the grasslands into a tinderbox, waiting for an irresponsibly disposed of cigarette or unattended campfire to set the entire area alight. So after driving for hours through the Idaho wilderness looking for that perfect campsite, we finally find it, and within 30 minutes, the sky gets covered with this hazy smoke, and ash starts raining down on all our gear, and uh, next thing you know, fire helicopters are flying overhead. So basically what we're going to do now is pack up and get out of here as good, safe, responsible airmen should. By mid-August, it's not uncommon for the entirety of the Snake River Plain and nearby valley systems to be completely blanketed in smoke. These fires burn thousands of acres every year, transforming the landscape and wreaking havoc on delicate ecosystems. With the trees burnt, nothing stops snowmelt from causing avalanches and rock slides, creating more road hazards for drivers to be aware of. Despite the hazards, Idaho does have a lot to offer. Keeping safety in mind, 
go out and have a look around. 